Okay everyone, and welcome to the third and final entry in our XCOM 2 Resistance Orders tier list series. Today we're looking at the Templar Orders. And if you haven't seen the first two videos where we covered Reapers and Skirmishers, I recommend watching those first. They'll just provide a bit more context. Links will be in the description. And with that, let's get right into it. Art of War. This one increases the ability points your soldiers gain upon promotion by 25%. Now, I like this ability in theory as ability points are a really useful resource, but there's quite a few limitations here. Firstly, it does not act retroactively, meaning it only applies to promotions that occur while this ability is active. So if you draw this one late game after your soldiers have already leveled up, its usefulness is substantially diminished. And that's actually going to be a recurring theme with quite a few of these resistance orders in this video. But anyway, Art of War actually has another big problem on top of that. See, soldiers gain different amounts of ability points based on their intelligence. And because this ability is percentage based, the soldiers with lower intelligence will benefit less from the perk. And ironically, they're the ones who need it the most, since the highly intelligent soldiers will already be earning a good amount of AP even without this order. So I'm going to say it's just decent. It's a good idea in theory, but it's pretty poorly executed. Bonds of War increases soldier bond rates by 25%. Now regular viewers will know I'm not a massive fan of bonds, so immediately my disposition towards this one is going to be negative. And the way bonds work is that they level up at different rates depending on the compatibility of the two bonded soldiers. If they have a high compatibility, it'll go up really fast. If they're less compatible, not so much. So straight away, this has the same flaw as the Art of War order. A percentage-based increase means soldiers with low compatibility are going to benefit the least from this perk. And once again, they're the ones who need it the most. The soldiers with high compatibility are going to level up that bond really quickly anyway. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this one, but I'm dumping it in Blast Padding tier. It takes a mechanic that is already flawed and it adds a fairly useless buff to it. I wouldn't take this order in a million years. Alright, Deeper Learning 1 and 2. So these ones increase your soldiers XP gains by 10% and 20% respectively. Now XP is a great thing to have and obviously the 20% is substantially more useful than the 10%. But once again, this is an order where you want to get it early to make the most use of it. Getting it later in the game makes it much less helpful. So I'll say this one is good. Alright, feedback. This one's pretty interesting. Psionic attacks on XCOM units cause damage to the caster. So this can be really useful when codexes drop a psionic bomb on your squad. They'll take feedback damage on every single soldier that the psionic bomb hits. So it can potentially one-shot them. This can also be a curse though, because if it doesn't one-shot the codex, they may clone, and that's obviously not what you want. And this ability also has another fairly annoying drawback. It doesn't trigger on a successful mind control that the enemy launches on one of your troops. Now I think it's because the feedback damage only activates after the attack, and once the mind control has activated, the unit isn't considered an XCOM soldier anymore, it's part of Advent's forces. So one of the worst psionic attacks that you can suffer in the form of losing a soldier to mind control, this ability doesn't do anything to protect you against. So yeah, that's pretty garbage. So this one is definitely a good ability, but it's not as good as it could be. Greater Resolve lets you send lightly wounded units into combat. Now, if they're wounded, the unit no doubt already has low will due to the injury that they've sustained. And once you send them into combat, that will loss is going to drop even further, and it's going to make their health issues even worse they're probably going to pick up a negative trait after the mission. And the one time you might actually need this order, the base defense mission, since that one often will take you by surprise, 
you can actually send wounded soldiers into combat on that mission already. So this is really pointless. This one may actually be the worst resistance order in the game. So yeah, blast padding most definitely. Hidden Reserves increases the Avenger power by plus 2 and plus 3 respectively. This is another 2 T ability. Now a plus 2 power boost will usually let you upgrade one facility, and a plus 3 should let you build a single new facility. Now it can be very useful in some circumstances, especially if you haven't made very much progress in excavating the Avenger. But the thing I dislike about this ability, and it's the same for the Reaper's Resistance Rising Order, if you take this perk and you build something that uses the extra power that you just received, you're now locked into keeping the perk. If you want to get rid of it, you'll have to find an alternative means of getting extra power in the Avenger. So while it can be useful, it can also reduce your options on the strategic layer, and that's not a good thing. I mean, imagine you pick this ability, and then the next month you unlock a way better one, but you can't equip the new one because then your power reserves will be too low. Really not a good scenario, so I'm going to say this one is just decent. Machine learning results in research breakthroughs being twice as likely to occur, so this is quite a useful ability here. Now a fair few research breakthroughs are quite bad, and that may make this perk seem less useful, but I don't think that's exactly true. Because even if you get a bad breakthrough, you can ignore it, and this ability is going to increase the rate at which you come across your next breakthrough, and that one might be something that's super useful. So this order lets you sift through the bad ones more quickly, and that's going to in turn increase the odds of getting something that you actually want. Now of course the big drawback is it is still RNG based, so even with a doubling of your odds, you're still not actually guaranteed to get any breakthroughs, let alone good ones, not even close. So I'll say this one is just good as well. Mental Fortitude, alright, finally we're getting to the really good stuff. So this makes all Battle Madness, Panic, Berserk, Obsessed and Shattered only last one turn. Now of those effects, Panicked is probably going to be the one that you see the most often, and this order makes Panic pretty trivial. If your soldier panics on your turn, they'll be good to go again on your very next turn, and if they get panicked on the enemy turn, they'll still be good to go on your very next turn. And so this gets rid of the worst part about Panic, which is not being able to control your soldier for a turn, often you won't have to worry about that here. And not only does it remove this negative, it can actually turn panic into a potential positive, something that you actually want to see. Your soldier can panic on the enemy turn, that's potentially going to give them a free attack against the bad guys because of the panic, and then they'll still be ready to attack again on your turn. Now this order's biggest drawback is obviously that it is situational. If your soldiers don't panic, you get no use out of it. But being able to ignore panic and not having to worry about it, that can make your life on the tactical layer much easier. So I did struggle between Mimic Beacon and Awesome Tears. It's a great ability either way, and I think I'm going to be generous here, and let's say Mimic Beacon. Noble Cause. This one increases will recovery in your troops by 20%. So I really like this ability. Will loss in War of the Chosen can be hugely irritating, especially when you do a story mission and then you get hit with another regular mission right after that. And this order actually serves as an indirect version of deeper learning too. If your soldiers are recovering Will faster, they can deploy on more missions and hence level up more quickly. And by doing that, you can spread your XP between a smaller number of troops and again, that's going to mean more high-leveled soldiers for you. Not to mention this ability gives you more options. If more soldiers are available for any particular mission or covert op, that's a good thing for you. Now the awesome category might be a bit generous, but it's certainly better than deeper learning, so I think it fits. Pursuit of Knowledge increases the research bonus that labs provide by 20%. Now given I rarely ever build labs, this is a fairly useless order. 
Now it could be quite helpful on legendary difficulty where research times are much longer, but as always, we're talking about commander difficulty in these tier lists. And I find I'm usually much shorter on engineers, empty facility spots, and the resources required to build facilities than I am on research time. Research time normally isn't too much of an issue. So I'm putting this one in the blast padding tier. There's way better abilities to choose than this. Stay with me results in your troops being more likely to bleed out rather than die when their HP is reduced to zero in combat. Now from my understanding, it kind of doubles your chances of getting bleed out rather than death, but not exactly. It's a complicated mechanic and it does depend on your soldier's will stat. And I believe if their will is high enough, this ability will actually guarantee that they go into bleed out. And this is another one that I really like. Keeping your soldiers alive is obviously your top priority, and the fact that high level soldiers benefit more from this perk due to having higher will actually makes it more useful. Your high level soldiers are the ones that you definitely don't want to lose. Now the obvious drawback to this perk is that you're hoping that you never have to use it. You want to protect your troops, and often giving them more offensive capabilities will generally be more useful than a defensive perk like this one. So I'm going to place this in the awesome tier. It might be a bit generous, but it helps protect your most valuable asset in the game, and we can't undersell that. This is a really good ability. Suit up. So this one allows you to build armor instantly in the Proving Grounds. So it's similar to Munitions Expert and Bomb Squad in that sense. Now I rated both of those as good in their respective videos, but Suit Up is honestly my favorite of the three. And it's because it applies to items that aren't random. See, unlike bullets, grenades, and heavy weapons, we can choose the type of armor that we want in the Proving Ground. So that makes this ability way more useful than those other two. And keep in mind, Exo and Warsuits come with a rocket, so you're basically getting a heavy weapon instantly too with this perk. So this one's really good. We need to place this higher than those other two abilities, so it's going in the awesome tier. Tithe, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. This one increases all resource rewards on missions by 15%. And we covered in the Reaper's video exactly what constitutes as a resource. It's supplies, intel, alloys, and Illyrium crystals. Now, 15% may not sound like much, because it isn't, but you're going out on missions pretty frequently in this game, so it will add up over time. It's not amazing, but it's decent. So that's where I'm going to put it, the decent category. I probably could be convinced to go for the good tier on this one too, but I think decent works. Trial by Fire doubles the ability points that your soldiers gain in combat. Now, just like Art of War, we want to get this one early to take full advantage of it, but this one has a significant benefit that Art of War doesn't. See, this order increases the ability points that get added to the community pool, not to specific soldiers. So this means that the AP that we're earning, we can spend it however we want on whichever soldiers we want. It gives us a lot more flexibility. And it also allows troops to earn AP at an equal rate. The troops with lower intelligence aren't disadvantaged here. Now you can get AP in this manner in many different ways. The first time a soldier takes a shot with a height advantage, the first time they land a flanked shot, just random stuff like that. But I believe you can also get it from defeating Chosen. So that means if you have the time for it and you're willing to take the risk, you can farm Chosen kills and get as much AP as you like. So yeah, a definite improvement over Art of War. I'm going to put this one in the good category. This is a solid choice. Vengeance, the final resistance order. When a squad mate dies, the rest of the squad gains random bonuses for two turns. This one sucks, I hate it. Firstly, you want to do everything you can to avoid your soldiers dying, which means you're never going to want to use this ability. And secondly, when it does activate, the effects are random, it's RNG based. 
So you could get really useful abilities or you could get a bunch of garbage. And given that we're talking about XCOM baby, which one of those two scenarios do you think is more likely? This is just a much, much worse version of Stay With Me. I would never pick this ability. I'd rather play Midnight Suns than choose this perk. Blast padding for it. It sucks. And there we have it. I've categorized all resistance orders for all three factions. Now, of course, as always with these videos, these are just my opinions. So let me know what you think about my list. What did I get right? What do you think I got wrong? What are your thoughts? I'd like to know. And yeah, that is this series now complete. So I hope you enjoyed it. It's been different to my normal content, but I liked doing it. And I might do some more of these style of videos in the future. We'll see. But uh, thanks for watching. And until next time, have a great day.